Hi there. <coughs> Sorry, hi there. Um, this is Dr. Rich McLean. I changed my name to Baron Dodger. And if you're witnessing this, you might be the owner of the beautiful house that I'm in at the moment. And um, I hope this message finds you well. Um, I'm reaching out with a sincere humility, seeking understanding and compassion. And you're probably ringing the doorbell and I'm not answering, but I just wanted you to see this video first. First of all, I want to say um, the house is absolutely beautiful. It's truly a sanctuary and I love it. And um, it was just, it's just been an amazing stay here. I haven't had the opportunity to stay here very long. And um, under the NDIS, oh, first of all, I should introduce myself. So I'm an artist, an author, an advocate, and um, I've um, spoken all over this country um, supporting um, marginalised people with, who have mental illnesses and their carers. And um, unfortunately for me, um, I've become a targeted individual of the Australian government. And that's a really difficult place to be in because um, I can't go to police. I can't be a whistleblower. I've been rejected as a whistleblower. And um, I can't get a lawyer either. So um, the other thing about me is that I'm a very public person. Um, I, I think I'm clever. I think I'm not too clever. I'm just stubborn, really. Um, that's how I got a doctorate. I've also got a doctorate in um, arts-based um, narratives and um, young people's ethical considerations of what it means to be um, post-human now and in the future through the eyes of AI and super intelligence, past an event horizon, pretty full on stuff. Look, I've introduced in this video um, to me as a targeted individual because if you're seeing this, I'm in your house and I'm not paying for it, but I've got no choice. Um, I'm um, a person with a disability. I've got um, chronic schizophrenia, ADHD, adjustment disorder, and a cognitive brain impairment um, from a suicide attempt that happened in um, uh, February 2021. It's been nearly three years and um, that whole tragedy has been um, delegitimized and whitewashed. The hospital owed me a duty of care, but of course um, the hospital was part of a system which was persecuting me. And um, I looked after myself for a good 35 years on my own. Um, making art and um, peacefully going about my business um, before I was made a targeted individual of the Australian government. And that's for the purposes of protecting my former partner, Steve Isonides, who worked for ASIO. Now, um, I'm entangled in a pretty toxic and isolating battle. Um, there is hope on the horizon though. It's fortunate that I'm in this home tonight because I have nowhere to go. I have no money. There's not enough for me to literally survive um, if I had have gone to my um, accommodation that was offered to me um, in which I would have had to pay rent and I wouldn't have had enough for food or bills or anything. It was um, unconscionable that I would accept less than what I deserve for helping uh, for being helped by people who are feigning to, to try and help me. And I think, honestly, some people do try and help me, but it's always with the caveat that they're refusing to help in the thing that I actually need the help in. And that is to simply acknowledge that my relationship with former ASIO agent actually existed for five years. Once that's acknowledged by the government, it will pave the way for um, a settlement. Now, um, my former partner exploited me. I was a person on disability pension and um, he was earning um, 40 grand a month and still expecting me to keep up with the Joneses. I was living off a total permanent disability um, um, payout and he used it. I used it keeping up with him. Um, Looking back, it was um, clearly, I was being taken advantage of and 
being exploited. Now, um, it's it's been a real journey over that time. Um, um, I've faced um, so many challenges. This conspiracy to pervert the course of justice is what it is. Is um, has violent methods um, because I know this because I've actually been attacked by an underworld government contractor inside a public hospital, which um, just goes to demonstrate how much the health system and the mental health system actually cares for me. I've been hospitalised seven times in the last three years, and each time they've left me without enough support, and currently I don't even have a psychologist, I have no psychiatrist, and I don't even have a GP. As well as being violently, um, have violent means, this conspiracy attacks me politically through systemic and political ways, and it causes neglect. Um, this has been going for years, and my suicide attempt was not the cause of, by, um, by uh, mental illness. Mental illness wasn't the cause. What the cause was, was a profound systemic neglect. It was family violence that delegitimized my story and removed the agency for me to get legal help and a settlement and um, further, um, this is a method known as no-touch torture. Now, no-touch torture I've described on the website, it's a way in which um, authorities can damage a person. And by damage a person, I don't just mean take their money. I mean damage them. When you remove someone's money from them in a systemic and political way, um, it's for the purpose of making them unable to function in the society they're in, which needs money. So as well as taking away the money, which is the thing that it is, it actually has a broader and more violent and more harmful detriment behind it. And that is to inflict maximum damage on the victim. Now, as I said before, I worked for 30 years helping marginalised people and people in the community who were suffering from mental illness who are related to and their carers. And I've got a Human Rights Award, I've got St Australia's Book of the Year, and I've fundraised for the Royal Children's Hospital. I've been a lover, not a fighter. And I um, have used the power of the pen and art to make the world a better place. And because I've been character assassinated by this malicious conspiracy, there's not a person that I can call who I can depend on right now. And this really saddens me. Um, now, I just want to say that um, the NDIS who are tasked with looking after people with disabilities, such as me, um, have refused to provide me um, a supported independent living application, which I need for my disability and which I need because this persecution of me pushes me consistently to suicide and I just wish to say I'm not suicidal. But there's only so much harm and neglect a person can take. And um, the application was um, not even completed and I was living as a homeless vagrant in my car for a month last November after I failed settlement after settlement after settlement, compensation after insurance, after everything. And this was continuing for 20 years. And it is for the purpose of, I've never ever had a lawyer. And that's an intelligent and coercive and secretive way with which to remove my agency to get my prosperity. Now, I just want to say, um, bring it right back to the owner of the property. I am in your house, I acknowledge that. 
if you want me to leave, just have a conversation with me and we'll negotiate. I haven't got much stuff. I've got my beautiful dog here who I love very much. But we'll be going to accommodation which is um, not really fit for her and I'll have to live with other people. Um, and that's going to be a conflict too because um, I don't feel like I can live with other people. I'm a very much a solitary creature. And um, I'm difficult to live with. <laughs> a lot of people will tell you that. Um, so um, I'm hopeful that you can just give me a little bit of time, enable to sort some stuff out so I can get my evidence that I've got on this website, which you can see, legitimately acknowledged by government agencies. And there's some really good news. The good news is that, um, well, I've got a lawyer who's said he's going to help me. We'll see if that happens. But um, I've now emailed um, quite a few um, places such as uh, the NDIS and I've made a statement saying the undersigned below me are making a legal demand for the NDIS to acknowledge knowledge, the evidence in this email. Now, um, I became homeless on the NDIS watch and they've made me homeless again. Like I would have had nowhere to go today if I hadn't have stayed in your house. So I'm very apologetic for that again. And I mean no harm. And I'm very respectful. Um, the NDIS is now obliged to acknowledge the evidence of my relationship with Steve Isonides as per the evidence. I'm not allowed to have a SEALS application until mainstream supports are um, um, exhausted. And workers' compensation is a mainstream support. So because of the conspiracy, I wasn't paid work, I was workers' compensation. So now the NDIS has to follow up with Work Cover Minister Danny Pearson. And that's not negotiable. That's part of the process. Also, they'll have to follow up with um, insurance and HDF. I became unwell from my job after I was triggered by a um, sexual abuse um, client I had who had child rape and incest issues. And um, I was going through my own VOCAT case with my own child sexual abuse issue. Now, because I'm a scapegoat and I didn't realise at the time, I wondered how it's possible that a report like that could be de-acknowledged and thrown out as doomed to fail. It's been a brutal, brutal existence for me, I'll tell you. Anyway, so the NDIS is going to have to follow up with HCF and they're going to have to acknowledge the evidence on the page and the evidence that my GP said that um, his illness wasn't a thing that we ever spoke about. He came in for his STD screenings. So it's within the NDIS's remit now um, to acknowledge those Main Street supports before a civil application is potentially granted, which I need anyway. Um, and they will have to solicit conditions necessary with legal help, um, which is obliged to me under the US UN Charter of a Person with a Disability, um, so I can be paid my compensation from mainstream supports. Um, and because of, I've made this demanding email, they've got a choice. Um, they can delegitimise it, which is a method the government uses with which to torture me and which they use to delegitimise my evidence and um, deny my story and change the narrative. Um, but they're not going to be able to do that anymore because I do have some, um, some legal help and um, they literally have to acknowledge um, the complaints that I've put in. And all of this, including the settlement from my former partner, means that I will no longer be a pauper and I will no longer have no money and no prosperity and I'll be able to begin to exist again after a brutal victimisation that's violent and has oppressed me and for which human rights abuses have been documented by an NDIS worker. And um, the Australian Human Rights Commission and also the NDIS have refused to acknowledge one of their own workers' reports on the brutal reality of me 
as a targeted individual and a victim of um, no-touch torture, and for especially these particular articles regarding the UN Charter of Human Rights for a Person with a Disability. That's Article 12. I'm supposed to have equal recognition before the law. Never happened. Article 13. Access to justice. I'm supposed to have access to justice. Never happened. Article 15. Freedom from torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. That has happened to me. Article 16. Freedom from exploitation, violence and abuse. I've been exploited, I've been violently attacked and my abuse happens systemically and politically every single day. Um, Article 17, protecting the integrity of the person. My integrity's been destroyed. Article 22, respect for privacy. My privacy's right out the window. I don't have any privacy. In fact, I've recorded government agents recording my home and harassing me with an audio harassment known as V2K, which is a method to wear down the victim and torture um, the person inside the house. Um, my health and adequate standard of living and social protection are also um, articles under the UN Charter of Human Rights for a person with a disability ratified by the government in 2008, which I do not have. These letters that I've been sending in are no longer permissible to be ignored. Um, this financial persecution of me has been a method of no-touch torture whereby powerful individuals, key political stakeholders, attack me and they do it by orchestrating other people to attack me on their behalf. They remain um, unaccounted for, they remain um, behind cloaks and cloaks of bureaucracy, hiding behind um, um, the delegitimization of who they are, the de-identification of who they are. But I know who they are, and I'm aware that they can't do this to me forever. So um, I just want to round off by saying, I will respect your house. Um, I love it, it's amazing. And um, it'd be just enough for Chris and I to have a home. It's been a long time since I've had a home or even the ability um, to pay for one, which I've, which I've always done most of my life. Um, all these problems have been part of a conspiracy to pervert the cause of justice and it's tortured me and I'm very tired. Um, I ask for your forgiveness for staying in your house and um, I ask for you just to, even if you could just um, acknowledge me or hang in there with me for a short amount of time until I can get an acknowledgement from these institutions, as well as ASIC and um, APRA, because, um, because of this I've had to go bankrupt. And I shouldn't have had to go bankrupt because I was convinced not to put in my former partner. So once these all um, start hitting the fan, I should be able to get um, some prosperity back and I'll be able to get a little bit of agency to act um, in a way which is just, you know, really trying to save um, what has become not a really normal life. I don't have the same qualities as other Australians have. For example, the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet refused my freedom of information when it was first described as voluminous and complex. I'm banned at the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. They've got six weeks to come to a determination for a vulnerable person, but mine took years and now They've banned me. That's a systemic and political way in which to redact someone's prosperity and it's part of an orchestrated campaign to do me harm and um, to coerce conditions necessary that I would kill myself. I've already proven to have done that. It was deemed fatal and um, I was revived from certain death and it's been three years and there has been no um, person who's been apologetic. Um, everyone has done the bare minimum and there's been no action or agency or litigation or settlements from anywhere, anytime, any place. And I've looked back over these 20 years to my autobiography that I published in 2022 and it's been um, 
evident to me now that my brave narratives on um, living with schizophrenia and recovering from it have now maliciously been used and weaponized against me. So the actual vulnerabilities that I already have, that I admitted to, are now things um, that are purposefully um, um, I'm attacked with. Um, and it's, it's a real awful thing and it's a, it's, it's a dreadful thing that you've, um, you've entrusted you know, the public with your words and then um, powerful people have turned around, secretly held that information and then weaponized it and used you against you. And the, the very big example of that is in this conspiracy, when I complain about it, they lock me up and call me delusional. And that's um, a symptom of not sick me, but it's actually a sick society. And um, I just want to exist in society so I can serve people and so I can be of assistance to other people who are marginalised and other people who I've shared experiences and stories with. And that's what I'm good at. And that's what I'll do again, God willing. If I can just please ask you to let me stay in your house for a little while. I'm very open to conversation. I actually decided that I wouldn't speak. You know, this would be the last time I speak until I get justice because I've just tried so many years. But if you want to come in and have a conversation with me, I'll boil the kettle, come and say hello to Crystal. And um, look, I hope that we can make some sort of um, arrangement. And especially regarding... The fact that, you know, once one gets over the line, they might go on like dominoes. And I just may be able to buy this house for a lot more than you paid for it. And that is something I will commit to do um, should justice come. But if you can just, um, just hang in there with me for a little while, please don't be angry. Please don't persecute me. And please don't call the police because the police are in on it. So, um... It's Richard McLean. Oh, I used to be Richard McLean. I'm Baron Dodger now. And I'm um, here in Victoria, in Melbourne. I'm um, a targeted individual of the Australian government. And um, I'm hopeful that um, the owner of this house will find a little bit of um, understanding, compassion in their heart in order that I might just stay here and be safe for a while because I have death threats and um, my former partner's threatened to kill me and my dog. And that's something I can't go to police about. So um, I am scared. Hopefully I can stay in your house, but look, just come and have a conversation with me and um, we'll go forward from there. Thanks really very much for listening. I know it's difficult having an unwelcome guest in your house, but if, you know, there's enough in this world for everyone and I've always believed that. And there's enough for me and somehow we've got to find a way with other people and organisations in which we can um, um, elicit the conditions that everyone will have enough, you know. And, and I'll be very grateful to stay here. Thanks.